Hi, everybody. I'm Marla Gold, and I'm your host from Dog Care on Air. And I'm delighted to welcome Linda Tellington Jones today to speak to us about how to use T Touch for end of life care with your dog. This is a special pre conference broadcast, a prelude to the Dog Care on Air conference happening online November 16th and 17th, where you can watch presentations from dozens of North America's top dog experts in what promises to be the largest dog conference in history. You can attend the entire two day event for free and watch broadcasts at your leisure on all aspects of dog care, from health issues and therapy options to nutrition, training, and innovative new products for your pet. Today's presentation with Linda Tellington Jones is just one of three presentations she has prepared for us to be viewed at our November conference. The other two topics are an introduction to the T Touch method and body kinesiology, a simple way to communicate with your dog. So be sure to tune in again on November 16th and 17th for the Dog Care on Air conference to learn more from Linda and our other fabulous presenters. Now, if you're listening in, you're already registered to have free access to the November conference. So we invite you to spread the word, tell your friends and anyone else who has a love of dogs or who is caring for a dog in their life. Simply click the links on the broadcast page and share it with your community on Instagram, on Facebook, even in a text message. Using T-Touch for end-of-life care. Your dog's passing is difficult and traumatic moment for both you and your pet. Find out how, about how using T-Touch methods can provide comfort for you and your pet through this transition. In this presentation, Linda Tellington-Jones will share with us how she has used her world-renowned Tellington T-Touch method in different situations for dogs who received end-of-life care and the loving and peaceful outcomes for both dog and caregiver. Linda Tellington-Jones, she's the founder of Tellington T-Touch Method, and she continues to influence all who come in on, into contact with her revolutionary approach to animals. She has impacted hundreds of thousands of people through her live appearances, her seminars, books, and videos. Mm. She has lectured at universities, zoos, and veterinarian conferences in North America and Europe. Her work has been featured for more than 30 years on television and in countless publications internationally. She has written 21 books and that have been translated into 15 mm. languages. And currently, there are teachers of the Tellington T-Touch method in 33 countries around the world. Welcome, Linda, and thank you for joining us on Dog Care on Air. We're so grateful to have you here today to talk to us about an experience every dog owner has to go through. You know, when it's time to say goodbye to our, to our pet, whether it's due to old age or other health reasons, and it's reassuring to know that there's something that we can actually learn to do to prepare for this and make our dog's life more comfortable. Yes, and it's such a pleasure for me to be able to share this with you at this, uh, what, what you can do at that end of life. And we have some other stories to tell you. Yeah, in fact, you've got two different situations, uh, two different dogs who are near the end of life. You're going to tell stories. But before we go into the, the telling of the stories and what you did and, and the teachings, um, would you just tell us, talk to us a little bit about T-Touch and what Tellington T-Touch method is? Well, the T-Touch method, the Tellington T-Touch method is a way of honoring the body, mind, and spirit of animals and their people. And the method is comprised of actually four aspects that, for dogs. It's the T-Touch method itself, the work on the body, and that's what you're going to be learning. It's the uh, playground for higher learning. These are elements of ground exercises and that's a whole other way of bringing our animals, our dogs, into balance, mental, physical, and emotional balance. And it's all kinds of equipment that we have developed over the years, double-ended leashes and many things that really make life with your dogs so really wonderful. And it's our philosophy. So today, what we're going to be doing is sharing the T-Touch, the type, the body work itself. Wonderful. And we're, I'm curious, you know, can anybody learn Tellington T-Touch? Yes, anybody who has, a, one of the reasons that anybody can learn it is that we have a found a logical way of teaching the various elements of the T-Touch, for instance, on the body. Um, and we have given like 
20 different animal names to parts of your hands, how you put your hands on your animal. And that gives us an opportunity to say, ah, okay, like you're going to learn today how to use the raccoon touch, very various touches to be connect with your dog, cell to cell and soul to soul. And what it does is make that dog, give the dog a reason to really want to bond with you, to really be with you. Oh, that's wonderful. And like, what are the common effects of T-Touch on your dogs? What can, what can we expect? You can expect um, a connection, a really special connection. As I said, it's like a cell to cell and soul to soul connection, a dog wanting to be with you. It brings the dog into focus. It allows them to be grounded, to really know where they are in space, to give them a sense of their body, a whole new sense of their body so that it makes a difference with behavior and performance and relationship with your dogs and their well-being just from using the T-Touch. Wonderful. And um, when do you recommend using T-Touch? I mean, is it something that you just do when your dogs are, are having behavioral issues or is it something you can do every day? I mean, what do you recommend? One of the things, when instead of just petting your dog, you put your hands on and you simply get in the habit of being, staying present and move the tissue very lightly in one and a quarter circle instead of simply petting or, you know, like some people do kind of, or, or like, mm, you know, how we all have a tendency when we get excited. Some dogs really like that, like sort of rough way and other dogs don't. And so I'm going to show you how to be with your dog in a way that uh, really elicits a respectful connection. Lovely. So you can do this every day with your dog. It's something you can do just when you're petting with, you know, just hanging out with them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And they'll get yes. used to it and they'll want, they'll want more. <laughs> yes. And one of the things that I, I failed to mention and why it's easy to learn is that we have different pressures and I'm going to teach you that because the way you contact your dog makes such a difference whether they want to be with you or not. So this is not massage. It's a very light way of, wow, bringing the dog so they say, but give me more. So I will be teaching you those pressures and the tempo. You'll see that. So now we're going to get to the interesting part where you're going to talk to us about your cases. And we have um, our first case, which is the um, is Abby. She's an 18-year-old Jack Russell Terrier. So tell us about Abby. Uh, Abby is very dear to my heart. That's interesting that I just get this really heartful connection when I see her. Um, a year ago, June, I was visiting with a friend, and Abby had been, she's had Abby since she was a puppy. Uh, she was now 18 years old, and I was asked by my friend, did I think that she was ready to cross the Rainbow Bridge? Because um, she was thought to be blind and couldn't hear, and um, so, and she had a tendency, if you went to, like, try to give her a treat, she'd kind of go, mm, like this. You'll see it in the video. And um, the, my friend was certain that her quality of life is still okay, uh, but she had this um, habit that some older dogs get. It's very common of just, like, walking back and forth, back and forth in the same line. And she'd been doing this for about a year. You know, at a certain time during the day, she'd just start this pacing, like a form of dementia. But she still um, ate really well and liked being with them. Although, <laughs> the interesting part here in the video is in all those years, she had never been able to be picked up and held. So that meant that although my friend said, yikes, her smell, her teeth really have a bad smell, um, they couldn't take her to the vet because she would just flip out. So I'm there with my tea touch and I would like to I'd like you to see what happened actually with Abby because um, maybe I'll tell you a little story ahead of time um, after I worked with her just a total of seconds at a time over maybe an hour one day and an hour the next day and you'll see us there um, she was able to be picked up and taken to the vet 
and actually had her teeth extracted and they were really rotten. And she came home right after <laughs> being at the vet, ate like a little horse, even the dry food, had no trouble eating. And she lasted another year, another year. And I got to work on her again, like just last month before saying goodbye. And the thing that was so interesting in the family, the husband um, thought it was time for her to go because she couldn't control her poo or pee. And so, you know, he would sometimes step in it. But you'll see from the story. Let, let's, 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 let's see the, the video. Okay, here we go. Now there is, you see how she grabbed at it sideways? Now this is already the second day. And she would actually stop there and I actually could do the tea touches. Now the first day, huh, she just walked back and forth. And as she'd go by, I just do this little -da -da -da, what I call daddy long neck, just as like -da -da -da. it's like slowly, it's that slow, but it would -da -da -da. and um about the fourth time that she walked by, same line, and I was just sitting on the floor, um, she stopped. And she when she stopped, my fingers went right behind her ear, and you're going to see that here in the video the second day it happened again and oh she pushed her head like really pushed into my fingers and went right to the floor and I thought hmm is this an ear issue or or a teeth issue so let's just watch the video a moment and get a sense of what we were doing we can listen so I had just been touching her like the seconds there then she walked away and she came back and that time she looked at my hand and i'm just doing these very light touches on her just moving the tissue with the tips of my fingers the tips we call the raccoon touches it's like little raccoon working and see how she's pushing down into push 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 and that's when i knew hmm something was going on and it was both sides. If she went in the other direction, she'd do the other, same thing with the other ear. <clears throat> and you can see, now imagine, this is a dog who the day before couldn't be touched. And here she is, and there she does a little shake off that's like just relaxing, and oh, she wanted more and more and more on her ear. Uh, now I'm doing a little fast tempo on the side of my thumb. I'm taking the side of my thumb and doing a little circle in the quarter with the side of my thumb and then with my fingers. And, and then she wants to really feel that. Ooh. And then we let her go. And that's when I went, and she took off. <laughs> now maybe we could hear um, my friend with her voice. Can we hear, play that? So this is her pacing hour. Yeah, and, and so what we're saying is this is a, this is what they call it sundowner time. You know, it, when she started going back and forth, and and actually at one point when I clapped my hands, you could see that she actually um, stopped and looked at me. See, and that's nervousness, wanting to get the treat, and not knowing that she could actually get to it. Look at that. And I'm just doing little tiny, tiny, tiny touches, little circles around. <clears throat> That's really nice. <clears throat> and now, just so you know, I'm doing a little one and a quarter circle, little slide, little circle, little slide, very lightly just as lightly as you would actually do it on your eyelid. Oh, that's how light that is. And then I let her go. And see, she looked at me that time when I clapped my hand. That was really, really, for me, really clear that she can see some and she can hear. OK, 
can you hear that us talking because it was kind of interesting. <laughs> so she goes just by. And you just wait for her to come back to you. You're not running Absolutely. after her. You're just no, waiting no. her own time, right? Thank you. And that's really important. I want her uh, at first when she couldn't be touched the day before. I just sat and she took the same line every time. And I just literally didn't try to stop her at all. I just, da, 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 da. And after about the fourth time back and forth, I, th there's a bathroom at the end of this kitchen. And I walked in and sat down on the toilet and left the door open. And she, Oh, it makes me cry every time I think about it. Like she followed me in and did one little lick on my hand. Wow. And just like coming back here and standing, wanting more. And I mean, this is just, and it's just a, the lightest that you can move the tissue. Because when you move the tissue with the very, very light tips of your fingers, whenever you move tissue very lightly, it activates the oxytocin, which is known as the trust hormone. And you develop a special trust with your dog. The second T in T-Touch stands for trust. It's a touch of trust. And then just, you now see I'm doing this little connected circle. Now there I did a zigzag because I wanted to just show that's what my friend had been doing was zigzags and she didn't want it. And see, as soon as I did that, it was too much. It's just the tiniest, lightest little circles. That's what convinced her that. That, was, cool that was just a like a really incredible example of how when you work on dogs, what happens in the moment because every time it's different, right? Like there isn't one. You start with this T touch method, and you go to this one, and and right there isn't that kind of protocol. It's just what is the dog needing in that time? Do you want to speak yeah. more about that? Well, yes, and the thing is, if you if your dog can be touched, like not like she was, you, we start with the back of our hand, just like because that's really non-threatening, and just yeah. seeing, you know, can you go? We call that the the llama touch because that's what I use first on llamas who couldn't have their ears touched. Okay. So you you just get give them a sense of the boundaries, and once I do that, then I kind of start. Wait a minute, now can I put my hand on the chest a little? And I think, did we see that already? I can't remember if we saw that already. And, and then I'll, I'll kind of start making these connected circles from the shoulders down along the back, very, very lightly along the back. And it brings them into the body. It gives them a sense of well-being and confidence. That's Let's really go. special. Let's go through all the touches that you were using in this video so you can, you can speak more to them and, yep. and we can understand how we're gonna, we can do them on our dogs. Right. Okay, so, um, so this, is, this is just an overview. Yes, of and all the of mind, thank you. And the mindful pause is like, you didn't see me pausing much between them because I was only working for seconds, but just this idea, a uh, little circle and then just wait a little circle and a quarter and a little slide okay. and sorry and giving her the pause in between pause to go away come back if she wants that was what was really important in her case right so she she needed that time she needed that connection with you you weren't going to overwhelm her it would be too overwhelming to continue with all these the t-touch methods you the mindful pause was just sort of like when yes. she needed it you you could you could sense when she needed it and and just do a little bit and then let them go and see if you want to come back just wait okay and then we had the clouded leopard touch yes now the clouded leopard touch just means the part of your hands that you're using so when i put my fingers together like that it's just like mm, about half of the first section of my fingers and notice how my hand is up off the body. I don't rest my hand on the body for the clouded leopard. And I simply move the tissue. Hold your own arm up and try this and feel. It's one and a quarter circle. And then I do a little slide, maybe to the next place. And on Abby, I was doing a little tiny um, circle and a slide, just like right as and fast and I was doing like we have one two and three second circles 
And that just means the one second, why was I going so fast? Because, yeah, she didn't want to be touched. So you go faster and don't, you know, just, what, five seconds? I was maybe 15 seconds total I was doing at a time. Even just, Linda, even just me doing that on my own arm was very calming, was very, it was a, it was a nice touch. It was a nice subtle touch. Yeah. <laughs> and the beauty about this, you, you can learn this for your dog, but you can do this for yourself. And I'm going to lead you through one of the touches in the end for yourself. Very good. So the next one we, that uh, you did, this is one of my favorite ones, actually. <laughs> I watch you do I just get shivers in my spine. <laughs> well, the funny thing is this isn't in any of my books yet because um, my dog, Rainy, at the end of her life, this is what she loves. Just this little skitter, skitter. And I find terriers love it. It's not such a big, it's not such a favorite of bigger dogs. Interesting. It's kind of like, mm -hmm, little smaller dog thing. And uh, it is kind of like daddy long legs. You can imagine that, can't you? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I like the shivers that you're getting. <laughs> it it is. It gives me shivers. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we had the heart hug. Yes. Now, what I'm putting one hand on her chest and one I had up on the, just on her withers. And I'm going to be showing, teaching you this after. And it's just a little hold over the withers, like above the shoulders, and a little circle of your other hand down below. And it, it's a really nice, calming connection. And just for seconds, and very lightly, just with the nice pauses there. Nice. And the raccoon touches. Raccoon touches. You know, that's like, um, you can see it. It's with the really tips of your fingers, just the tips, as opposed to half of this first sec uh, section of the finger is the tips. And it's usually like little tiny, tiny circles. And um, it's, by the way, the circles are like one and a quarter circles. I didn't even mention that yet. And you'll see, people say, well, how come one and a quarter? If you do it on yourself and you just do exactly one circle, it's like, hmm, not quite finished. But there's something in that, and we years later realized, years after I first developed this, we realized, wait a minute, in that one and a quarter, and starting on the body toward the ground one time around to, to six and then up just a little to the quarter and it doesn't matter which direction you go in you stop one and a quarter so you'll either be stopping at nine or at three and you have to be mindful to do that and that means you're not thinking about hmm, what am i going to get for dinner or what am i going to do next is no wait a minute just stay present. Give my dog the honor of me going into that place of quiet. And that brings me into heart coherence. And it's been shown by Heart Math Institute that when you are in this place of calm, of the heart coherence, your dog will want to be with you. Very interesting. Yeah. Helps you help yourself as well as your dog. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Let's go to the next one, the ear tea touch, which Abby seemed to really like. Yeah, and she really wanted that. And I, I first, I just was first using the raccoon touches around the base of the ear. And then uh, there you can see my right thumb is against her ear. And I'm doing it with the side of my thumb, right against the base. Now, the reason the ears are important, around the base of the ear, is a triple heater meridian that runs down the base of the ear, down the neck, across the shoulder to the front paws. And it affects the digestive system and the respiratory system. Also the reproductive, but that's not so interesting for us at this point. Respiration and digestion. And the whole ear, when you do a very gentle slide from the base out to the tip of the ear, that affects the entire body. And you do it like, I, I recommend that you, you make that slide as though you were working with a rose petal. It's a very gentle slide. And it affects the, you can have an animal who's sick or in shock or really hurt or a person 
it's the same. And you can do this to yourself, by the way. And, um, and bring them out of shock or keep them out of shock. Oh, that's a really useful situation, especially, you know, with dogs being uh, reactive to loud noises or they've gone through something like sometimes when it rains or storms or when there's fireworks or that, that situation. Absolutely. And that's when the ear slides combined with our body wrap really can bring them to a place of staying present in the body and not just like going into fight flight and wanting to flee. Right. Get some grounded. So, so important. Okay, let's go on to the next case, which is your dear Rainy, who is your beautiful Westie. Uh, tell us the story. Oh, sorry, this is, uh, I just wanted one more, one more, uh, yes. <laughs> the, end, the end of the story of <laughs> Abby, which is like the celebration. Um, this was amazing yeah. because after Abby, Abby went to the vet like in the next week, just a few days after I left. And then when she came back, their neighbor boy had always loved her, but he could never hold her. And he was able to pick her up and hold her. And that was a huge deal, a huge deal for them. And the whole next year, she was so much, the, Abby was so much more engaged with them and was going outside to pool and pee. And it was with them, of course. I mean, it was really a wonderful experience. How wonderful too, because it was completely unexpected that she would even be around for a year, right? Like you were going yep. to offer some, just some comfort in her time of maybe it was the end for her, but you know, you, nobody knew, nobody knew what was, what was going to come of it. And, and in this situation, she had another year of, you know. Well, the situation was that my friend wanted to know what my opinion was. Was she having a quality of life worth living? Or as her husband felt, you know, was she, because she was demented, was this quality of life enough? And this is a really important question. And you'll see how I made that decision with Rainy because we'll we'll talk about that how do you make that decision let's go let's go think? let's go on to rainy yeah yeah okay here she is beautiful rainy oh, this is our rainy oh, she's been gone now already six years and she's still so present in our lives and um the thing is um i am we live my husband and i live in hawaii and i wanted to go to the shelter and just get a small dog because my husband roland um, bred cattle dogs at his ranch in Canada and we live in the suburbs now and um, so he didn't see a dog being in the house but I said but I don't want a dog I want a quarter of a dog <laughs> just a small dog and in our shelter we only have these big dogs there were no little dogs so we heard about her on another island where we didn't have to bring quarantine and um, so we brought her when she was five months old and Rainy was one of these dogs of the heart. And um, I have to tell you, just do I have time to tell a short story about her? Yeah, please. Well, <laughs> um, I travel to teach all the time. And some, when I'm on, uh, in the United States on the mainland, my husband stays home in Hawaii. When we go to Europe, he comes with me. But I was on the mainland, and um, we had Rainy two years at that point. And um, I, when I called home, I uh, said, oh, it was bedtime, and I said, where's Rainy right now? I expected him to be beside her on the couch. Oh, she's in her crate by the door. What? Excuse me. Well, she's two years old now, and it's time that she was a watchdog. Okay. So you know it is when you have a husband who cares as much as you do. So I got home, and I, I watched this, and I mean, I'm just, like, horrified. Um, and But... I said, well, would you be willing to speak with an animal communicator about how Rainy feels about this? So I, I did not coach her at all. I just told her that our dog was no longer sleeping in, the, in, the, in our room. She was in the crate by the door, and the door was open. She was just supposed to stay there, which she did. And um, so what did she feel about it? And what she said was, that her job was to be the protector of my heart and that her legs were too short. If anybody came, <laughs> she couldn't warn us and that she needed to be in our bedroom. 
to be the protector of my heart. I'm sure that will touch many of you. And so that's where she always was. Well, um, when she was 14, she started to fail. And um, she lost her sense of hearing. She lost her ability to see where she was. She would get really confused and wander into a corner and start crying and not be able to turn and get out. She was eating, but the question I have is, is this a quality of life? Because I'm, I was raised on a farm and I think, it's, I think it's really wonderful when animals can have a natural passing, especially when they've been in our homes and there are cats or our dogs or our, our horses, but any of the animals, any of them who are close to us, if they can have a natural passing. And, I, and I'm very connected to my friend, Dr. Ella Biddle, who has a wonderful program for hospice for animals. And uh, it's an online program that we'll put up later that you can look at because it's, really, it's a really wonderful program. But I was questioning Rainey's quality of life. And so I called my communicator friend and I, I asked her, what is Rainey feeling? And what Rainey said is that she was angry, that she couldn't do the job that she was here to do. She could not look after my heart anymore. And so um, my friend does not ask an animal whether they're ready to go unless the person is ready to let them go. And I was ready to do whatever she said she wanted. And she said that she would like to be helped over the Rainbow Bridge. And so I asked her, my friend, I asked when, and she said in three days at sunset. And so we prepared for this and I sat with that for like a day and I still wasn't sure. And I called in another friend and she came and did a really blessing and a prayer and it was really beautiful. And the strange thing is we were down, we, we have two levels and we were in on the main level and Rainy was upstairs and we were sitting and Rainy, not being able to see or hear, we thought, came downstairs and sat under my friend's chair. Wow. And that's when she got also, she was ready to go. And so we had a party in three days. We had a group of friends, our vet who came to our home. And the friends who had been house sitting with her while we were away, and we had a, we just sat around with her and talked about, you know, all of the times that we'd had with her, and then our vet quietly put her down, and we just stayed, and it's like she was sleeping there with a lay around her and flowers around her, and we sat and and talked. Of course, everybody's crying, of course, but we're. It's tears of joy, and we really turned that into like ah, talking about all the things. I mean, Rain used to go to meditation classes when people would come and house it for us, and she was really a very present, like we call it, dogs are dear to our hearts. So, I really encourage you. And one of the things that she said is that she would like me to take a snip of her hair and put it in a locket, which is what I did. And um, of course, her picture is right beside me here. And the idea is when you have, when you have the opportunity, like to be with your dogs at end of life, which is what I really recommend when it's possible. When you put your hands on them, make sure that it's very lightly. That instead of resting your hand, don't rest your hand. It, you just support the weight of your own hand. And in that case, when they're on the process of crossing the Rainbow Bridge, just want like three quarters of a circle. Don't close the circle. Just very gently be there. And celebrate. Really, we can see one of the basic parts that I didn't say to you of the Tellington Method is our philosophy. And that philosophy is a practice with our animals and ourselves of seeing a half empty glass as half full. Like, I, this isn't quite half empty, but how do I see this? 
Do I see the empty part or the full part? And it's human nature to see the empty part. And we can go beyond that and choose to see the glass half full. And in this place of mourning, it, it doesn't make it any easier. But instead of shutting our feelings down, feel them and bring in the joy with the tears. And know that now, ha, huh, you know, every time you leave home, your dog is going to be with you in your heart. And the deeper you bring them into the heart, uh, the more they'll stay with you over the years. And they'll help you find maybe your next dog who will come along under the influence of your last one. <laughs> A lot of times that does happen, yes. So it does. You, um, I love the story of, of, of Rainy and how um, there was also a, a ceremony that you did around, uh, around Rainy. Could you tell us a little bit about the ceremony? Well, what, what we just did, you know, was um, each person said what she brought especially to their lives and um, just touched her, held her, you know, celebrated celebrated what she'd given us and the connection that we all had because of that and um what was really interesting she asked to be buried um at a certain time of the night and as we did this one of our friends like was across town at that point when we buried her because we we kept her um on dry ice in a ceremony so that we could actually be with her spirit. And when we buried her and put the lay on top of her grave, across town, my friend who'd been with her the most said that there was this huge rainbow just like covering the sky, which isn't so, it's not so usual in Hawaii. And I, I know she was crossing that rainbow bridge. And I have this, this um, I'd like to read you this poem that, I found about the Rainbow Bridge. And I'll, I'll hold it up so you can see I'm reading it. Um, just this side of heaven is a place called Rainbow Bridge. When an animal dies that has been especially close to someone here, that pet goes to Rainbow Bridge. There are meadows and hills for all of our special friends so they can run and play together. There is plenty of food, water, and sunshine, and our friends are warm and comfortable. All the animals who've been ill and old are restored to health and vigor. Just imagine that. Those who were hurt or maimed or made, are made whole and strong again. Hold that knowing in your heart. Just as we remember them in our dreams of days and times gone by, the animals are happy and content except for one small thing. They, they each miss someone very special to them who's been left behind. They all run and play together, but the day comes when one suddenly stops and looks into the distance. His bright eyes are intent, his eager body quivers. Suddenly, he begins to run from the group, flying over the green grass, his legs carrying him faster and faster. You have been spotted. And when you and your special friend finally meet, you cling together in joyous reunion, never to be parted again. The happy kisses rain upon your face, your hands again caress the beloved head, and you look once more into the trusting eyes of your pet, so long gone from your life, but never absent from your heart. Then you cross the rainbow bridge together. And I love that there's a, I, uh, there's a wonderful book uh, maybe I can find it and post it here. It's a woman who talks about, you know, heaven and the rainbow bridge. And she said, well, <laughs> I'm not going to heaven unless I know my animals are waiting there for me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wonderful. That was a wonderful poem to read. Actually, we'll have that as a handout for everybody if they'd like to, to have it as their, a piece. Yeah, a part of their and own. You have that um, picture of the Rainbow Bridge that someone sent me, right? Yeah. It, it yeah. has a little west. Of, you can get like your animal at the Rainbow Bridge. Someone sent it, sent this, friend sent this to me. 
It's a, be- a beautiful um, in memoriam of the, your dog who has passed and you can hear the picture of your dog can be in that image of the rainbow bridge and we'll have, right. a, we'll have that also as a handout too that people can look at. Absolutely. So tell us, like, I mean, of all the experiences you've had, you know, um, near the end of life care, what are some examples of, you know, behavior changes and things that are happening as you, as, as the, as the dog is getting older, um, in your experience, can you speak to, to what, what to expect and, and how to, how to go through this? Well, um, I mean, some dogs don't go through these stages, but it's very common to have them go to a place where they are forgetful. You know, they don't necessarily always know where they are. And um, it's hard, they may be, start to get a little stiff. Of course, you know, there's so much you can do with your veterinarian to make the, that, those later years more comfortable, where you can give them herbs and natural medication, not medication, but natural supplements that will help them and also like getting a um if they're if it's a bigger dog getting their food up so they don't have to scrunch down to eat their food this is really helpful and you know i'm i think anybody who's on your show will know have a veterinarian that you can who knows your animal make sure that you get regular you know, checkups, and it's made such a difference. I've always been blessed to have veterinarians who uh, were holistic, and um, our vet for Rainey would come when we were gone. She would come every two weeks to check on her, and just because that's the way she is. And um, stay connected, like, you know, with your community. Um, have friends who share in your dog. Yeah. yeah, don't don't do this alone, right? I like, don't think you have to keep this to yourself, or it's it, yeah, share. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and and that's where um, why it, how it came up such a big issue for me. I realized what an issue it was in um, one of my books, the Tellington Tea Touch. There's a chapter on saying goodbye, and a producer in Germany um, read my book because her beloved. Uh, German Shepherd Tom had gone out one night and disappeared and never came back and she was devastated and all of the people in the company where she met just would gave her a really hard time about grieving and she never found anybody else who understood her so online now there are wonderful groups who can understand you and um yeah, definitely Fine. reach out. Reach out, reach out for support. Definitely reach out. Yeah, absolutely. So this is um, um, the, the Tea Touch Heart Hugs is something you're going to teach us. I'm really excited about this because it just is such a wonderful thing, a wonderful tool to have in your pocket. I mean, for so many reasons. But go ahead and please guide us so, through this. So the heart hug you can do with like just one hand lightly over the other. And you just put it like on your chest and you imagine the face of a clock. Now, the reason you imagine like a clock taken off the wall, the old fashioned kind, you know, you put right here is that toward the ground, you put six o'clock, you know, nine, 12, three. And now the reason you put the numbers on there is the numbers help keeps you activate your logical brain. And, by imagining the face of the clock that activates the right hemisphere and that gives you the capacity for compassion creativity feeling instead of shutting down your feelings and your intuition your intuitive knowing of the love of your dog so then you just imagine catch like very lightly you can either even do it with just the tips of your fingers if you prefer or lightly with your hands, starting at six, move the tissue. Like I'm going to first start in the clockwise direction. So I go from six, nine, 12, three, six, nine. At nine o'clock, I take a really deep breath and release. Now, hmm, we're going to try it in the other direction because some of you will prefer the, clock, the counterclockwise. So I'll go six, nine. Uh, six three sorry 12 
nine six three and a nice deep breath. Now and smile. Now the smile is important because uh -huh. the smile activates the serotonin. And as I mentioned before, when you just gently glide the skin over the tissue, that activates oxytocin, the, feel, the uh, trust hormone. So when you're feeling like really upset, the part of the brain that's in control is this primitive reptilian part of the brain. And you can't think clearly. And when you do this one and a quarter circle, Nice deep breath and a smile. That takes you out of control of the primitive part, the fight flight, into the forebrain so that you can ah, come back to yourself and it will put you in heart coherence and in a place of ideal immune systems, nervous system support. And you can do it anytime and it takes like less than a minute to bring you back to that place of calm and peace. That is beautiful. It's a beautiful tool to have in, <laughs> in your back pocket <laughs> to bring yes. out anytime. Mm -hmm. And it really does feel like one way over the other does feel a lot easier or just, just feels more like I'd, I'd like to do it in the counter, the, sorry, the clockwise, clockwise direction is more from the six to it's the nine and then back individual. to the nine. Yeah, it's very individual. Yeah. So try your way. Oh, wonderful. Great. Okay. So this is something everybody can do. Now the, the next slide is just all about, you know, the celebration of life, which is, is, is all that you've been talking about. You know, however, for instance, it's the initial, we talked about having a party and the initial parting, but um, I just find it's really helpful to me, meaningful to, we have pictures in several parts of our house of our dog and um, I've had many wonderful dogs but it's interesting the the older I get I am now 82 which is like very exciting um, the more deeply I appreciate the heart connection because animals like throughout history dogs have been necessary to our survival for many reasons protection herding all the things that they do but now I believe our dogs are responsible for our spiritual health and making that daring to open your heart and ha knowing having a connection of a community of people uh, who support you in this. And no, you're not crazy. I can't tell you how many people say, oh, some people think I'm crazy because I have so many emotions for my dogs. Oh my gosh. No, they give us absolute Un, you know, unconditional love and they open our hearts in ways that sometimes, sometimes nothing else can. I agree. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Linda. Um, we're just going to, I'm just going to flash to the page where the rainbow bridge, um, the poem that you read to yeah. us, it yeah. will be held. It will be a handout for everybody to look at. And then also this is how you can get in touch with Linda. This is her website um it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us on this broadcast there was so much that we've learned from you um well, linda thank you so much it's been great information practical tools i'm sure that everybody is going to be using right away well what i'd like to say also besides my website that you can do on the website you will see that we have practitioners in all over north america actually all over the world that you can see and you can you can find a practitioner you're close to you and get some you know some tea touch sessions or private sessions or you can do a workshop or you can watch for one of my workshops or one of theirs or you can read one of my books and you'll see you're going to post those books after or you can go to a support website that we have we have at it's www dot dot ch that is a private monthly subscription that you can get to have all your questions answered and it gives you access to a library of all my videos and all of the webinars every week we have a different webinar 
with teachings and from my sis, myself, my sister, many of our instructors, so we have instructors from all over the world who come on and share that information. And that's your opportunity if you want to find people of like mind who love animals as you do. And we'll make, oh, wonderful. We'll make sure to post that link as well so people have access to all of your information. It's a wealth of information. Thanks again, Linda. You're very welcome. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> so, now I'd like to take a moment to thank you, our viewers who have watched our broadcast today. And a reminder that if you're listening in, you're already registered to have free access to our November conference happening November 16th and 17th. <laughs> we're we're going to have, yeah, we're going to have Linda back on. She's got two more presentations for us and we'll have over 50 presentation topics related to making your dog's life the best life possible because that's what dog care is all about. Dog care on air is all about. So please spread the message about dog care on air. Tell your friends, your family, your dog walkers, your veterinarians, mm -hmm. anyone who has a love of dogs or is caring for a dog in their life. Just click the link in our broadcast page, share it with your community. And we look forward to seeing you again online November 16th and 17th for Dog Care on Air. And to learn more from Linda Tellington Jones and our, our other fabulous dog care presenters. So bye for now. Hard hugs. <laughs>